every volcano has to have some reservoir of magma beneath it. Uh, what we don't fully understand is exactly what are the physical conditions inside that reservoir. So most people picture this giant vat of liquid molten rock. And most of us who are working in the field think that that's probably not the case at this point. Um, there are certainly accumulations of liquid and eruptible magma, mostly liquid magma, but they're probably not not the, the entire reservoir is probably not molten at any given time. So there's parts of it around the edges that are cooler that have higher crystal content, and then there's some parts of it that are hotter and then have lower crystals. So the, the hotter the magma, the fewer crystals, and as it cools, it crystallizes, just like any other substance. So we know that there has to be large bodies of liquid magma present at some point because they get erupted, um, but we don't know how long they're present before they get erupted. The rock that's at the surface now used to be the magma beneath the surface. And most of the larger crystals, the ones you can see with the naked eye, are big enough that they, they took a long enough time to grow. We know they grew beneath the surface. We also can date them and we can determine that. And so they are, they are recording not the conditions after eruption, but they're recording the conditions prior to eruption in the reservoir. So they're really the only way that we have of getting information about what's going on, or what has gone on, I should say, beneath the surface. The crystals in the rocks that we actually pick up on the surface, so when we date the crystals, they are about 20,000 years old. But we can also tell that of that 20,000 year history, only about 10% of the time were they in a magma that was hot enough to erupt. And the rest of the time, it was in a magma that was too cool and too thick and sticky to be able to actually erupt from the volcano. Um, so what this allows us to do is it allows us to, uh, to better interpret the signals that we're getting from the present day from looking at the geophysical estimates. So for example, let's say that Let's say that our finding had been that Mount Hood had liquid magma present all the time. Then if you image liquid magma, it's nothing special. It doesn't tell you anything more about how probable the, an eruption is. But now what we can say is that because liquid eruptible magma is only present 1% um, or maybe 10% of the time, if we do actually image eruptible magma at that low crystallinity, that highly liquid state, then that's an unusual state and it's much more likely to be in a state where it's about to erupt. We have some other preliminary data that suggests that a lot of other volcanoes behave in the same way, especially volcanoes in similar settings like the Cascades and Japan and so on. But we don't know, we have to test that. So we are, this work was supported by NSF and we're going back now to NSF to, uh, with a new proposal to try to extend this to other volcanic systems, but we don't know for sure. We can, we can say that based on what we see so far, it's likely that they'll operate in the same way.